Uh, thank you for attending my session. That is titled BigQuery and Cloud Machine Learning. I'm Kaz Sato. I'm a developer advocate for, for a Google Cloud Platform team. Uh, it's like an evangelist uh, for the developers. So I usually attend the uh, events like the, uh, this, the meetups and speaking about the, uh, especially the data and analytics products such as Data Warehouse or TensorFlow, which is the machine learning library. I have been working for Google for the last six years. So today I only have 25 minutes, so it's going to be really fast. So uh, please be patient. And I'll be talking about the combinations between the data warehouse, uh, especially BigQuery, which is the cloud-based data warehouse from Google, and combined with the machine learning products such as TensorFlow and Cloud Machine Learning Engine. And what is BigQuery? How many people actually heard about BigQuery? Oh, many people. How many people are actually using BigQuery? Not so many. Oh, maybe 20, 10 to 20%. Thank you. So what is BigQuery? It's a massively powerful processing uh, data warehouse or query uh, that is based on the uh, old ex experiment we have done at Google uh, many years ago. Uh, they tried, uh, if you have the one terabyte of data in your disk drive, stored on disk drives, and if you want to scan everything within one second, how many disk drives you would have, have to run uh, running in parallel? The result was 5,000 or 10,000 disk drivers running in parallel to scan them all in one second. And we did it uh, with the uh, tens of thousands of the machines running inside the uh, Google data center. And the, the one problem you could have to build that kind of the massively parallel, uh, massively parallel processing query is the network bandwidth. Because you are running the same query on the uh, thousands of the machines, you'll be receiving the uh, uh, several gigabytes of the uh, uh, gigabit per second data uh, collected on the, uh, the existing uh, the requesting node. So we need to, the, you need to have the massive bandwidths that can hold the, uh, the power processes. So we, have, we are using Jupyter, which is a network fabric designed from scratch by Google's hardware designers. We are not using commodity routers such as Cisco or Juniper anymore. We are using our own hardware. Uh, designed from scratch that can yield 1.2 1, 1 petabit per second uh, in a dead whole data center. So that we can consolidate all the, uh, the memory resource or CPU resource or IO resources, disk spindles, uh, in, a uh, in a single data center with the microsecond latency, not the hundreds of microsecond latency. So by using the uh, petabit networks and by using the uh, uh, hundreds or thousands of the servers inside Google data center, you can run a single query uh, running with the uh, one to two thousand cores, CPU cores, and also by using the, uh, the hundreds of the disk spindle at the same time for running or just running a just one single SQL query. So let's take a look at the actual performance of BigQuery by running the uh, very simple uh, query against uh, 10 billion rows of table. Wikip10b is a sample table which has the 10 billion rows of the Wikipedia page view account. And now I'm trying to execute um, a regular expression matching against the table column. I need to change something like uh, my name Cas, so that uh, the query would not be cached. And if you have any uh, experience on using database or data warehouse, you know that by using the regular expression matching or this kind of the pattern matchings on the where clause uh, conditions for the query, that means you cannot use the, any database index. But the database index is the, the most important part of the data warehouse or database. You always need to build a database index to scan on the gigabytes or terabytes of data in a reasonable time. But with BigQuery, you don't have to care about the uh, data uh, index at all. So let me execute the query. So now query is running in the, the data center in the United States right now and scanning the uh, about 400 gigabytes of data and they got the result within six seconds. This is not cached or not indexed. This is a full scan or table scan speed. Uh, we can do that because we are running again uh, 1,000 to 2,000 CPU cores with the hundreds of describers in parallel with a, this particular single query. So that's the performance of BigQuery you could get. Uh, so this is a totally different thing. It's a true massively parallel processing, uh, pro uh, processing query on, in Google Data Center. So BigQuery is a fully managed, no-ops data warehouse. You don't have to hire any data 
uh, database administrator for running BigQuery. Only you have to have is the data scientist or application developers. So they can just put everything to BigQuery. So Google take care of everything, like distributing data, partitioning, or port transparency, uh, uh, everything. And as you, can, as you have seen, uh, you can scan the terabytes of data within tens of seconds, not the tens of the hours or tens of minutes. So if you are using any Hadoop MapReduce cluster or Spark MapReduce Spark clusters, and if you are taking like a, a few hours or tens of minutes for your query, you can 80% uh, of the customers can migrate those existing queries into BigQuery and can have the result within tens of seconds. So it's uh, from tens of minutes to tens of seconds. And you can also get the economy of cloud. If you compare the cost of the uh, BigQuery with the other the data warehouse provided, provided by competitors, it's about one third of the, the competitor's cost. It's so, e it's so inexpensive. And also, it's scalable. That means even one person or one user uh, could run a very slow running, uh, quick and dirty SQL against the, SQ, uh, the BigQuery, still the, all the other users or production services are not affected by the slow running query. So that means you can allow the, anybody in, in your enterprise directly accessing to the BigQuery. And that's what's happening in the United States and Japan. People are, no, no, uh, the IT department or, uh, or the database administrators are not taking care of the, all of the the request coming from the end users anymore. So they are just allowing the end users, enterprise people, directly accessing to the BigQuery. And anybody would not be uh, mad at it because the, nobody would be affected by the slow running queries. And now I'd like to introduce uh, the concept called feature vectors. If you have any experience on handling the uh, document search, similarity search, or content search, you may know about the feature vectors. So let's take a look, uh, look at the uh, actual demonstration. This is a demonstration called Query Smart, uh, where you can choose any kind of the uh, content, uh, and you can run the uh, similarity search against these contents. This time, I'd like to try the document similarity search running on BigQuery. Now BigQuery is running a query uh, against 10 million documents. That is um, the 10 million uh, questions posted on the Stack Overflow. and uh, It's a public data set available on BigQuery. And you can get the, uh, the result from the, from the similarity set within, within like 90 seconds. So this is not, again, this is not using any cache data or index. The query was actually comparing the two different documents and comparing the similarity between documents against 10 million documents. So this is the list of the all similar documents. They are all talking about something with a string in Java and converting the types, uh, things like that. So this is not about the uh, keyword search or tag based search. So how do you do that? So you have to uh, compare the similarity, not the uh, keyword based search. And what I have done with this demonstration was I have uh, used the BigQuery to uh, split the all the statement into words and extract the uh, signature or feature vectors that shows the uh, content of the actual the question, uh, uh, questions or documents. And I have used the user-defined function, or UDF, that can calculate the similarity between the signatures running on BigQuery. I'll be showing the actual demo, uh, the code. What is feature vectors? Feature vector is a vector, so that means it's a bunch of numbers uh, in a single vector. That represent, represents the content or signature of the, any uh, uh, content or documents or images or anything. For example, if you have uh, any uh, post on the social media, you can define uh, the, the feature vector against that uh, the document so that you can tell this particular document is talking about a movie, a riddle, and talking about uh, the music, a very riddle, and talking so much about the actor. So this vector represents the content of each document, and that allows you to run a much smarter query rather than using the simple tag or the, uh, the pattern matching based query. So in these demonstrations, I have used the TF-IDF, which is a classical standard uh, algorithm for counting the frequency of each word in the document, so that you can use the TF-IDF uh, algorithms to extract the feature vectors uh, from the documents, so that the TF-IDF uh, generates the feature vectors that shows the content of each document. And if you take a look at the two different vectors and take a look at the angles between the vectors, if the two vectors has a very narrow angle, that means the documents are so similar. So just like 
the uh, documents, uh, the vectors on the words as you, you are seeing on these diagrams. For example, the word music has a feature vector which is so close to the words songs or dances, artists, and you can do the same things uh, with the documents as well. And to do that, it's very important to use the UDF, user-defined functions. That is the key technologies I wanted to present in these sessions. User-defined functions is the uh, JavaScript-based JavaScript -based, uh, functions where you can write any kind of the JavaScript logic inside SQL. So in this case, uh, I have defined a function called calc similarity that takes two GF, IGF feature vectors and calculate the cosine similarity between the vectors. Usually, if you want to do this kind of the sophisticated or complex data processing, so you may want to use the, the Hadoop MapReduce or you have to hire many expensive people to build your Spark cluster, uh, writing uh, the Java or the Scala-based complex uh, query on that and uh, waiting for tens of minutes or a few hours to finish the batch processing. But you don't have to do that anymore. You can just have a big query and write JavaScript logics by yourself and uh, implement your uh, TF-IDF algorithms by yourself. And uh, I'm skipping the demonstration. And now I'd like to combine the, this uh, UDF on BigQuery with the TensorFlow, which provides the machine learning ability uh, for implementing the much smarter queries. What do you mean by smart? For example, if you want to, uh, if you are, uh, have your e-commerce website for fashion items, and if you want to capture some uh, the senses or instinct by the users, such as the, uh, the taste of on the fashion items, like a skirt and t-shirts, things like that, things think like that, it's really hard to express those uh, instinct or human senses by using SQL, standard SQL. So that's where you may want to use machine learnings because by using machine learning, especially neural networks, you can extract the, uh, some features or patterns from the data sets. So if you want to see it in action, I can run the uh, live demonstration how neural networks, especially deep neural networks, can extract the patterns from the training data set. In this case, I've used very simple double spiral patterns. And for humans, it's really easy to tell the difference between the orange spiral and the blue spiral. But what kind of SQL you would want to classify these spirals? It's really hard, right? Maybe uh, if you're good at math, you can define uh, some uh, equations for the uh, spirals, but uh, I don't want to do that. So instead, I would use the machine learning so that machine learning neural, neural network can extract the uh, double spiral patterns as you have just saw with the, this demonstration. So this is where you may want to start using TensorFlow. TensorFlow is the open source library for machine learning. And uh, any new AI or machine learning based Google services are all written in the TensorFlow inside Google. And we have open sourced the internal TensorFlow tool to the other open source tool uh, in November 2015. And you can go to the tensorflow.org and download the latest TensorFlow, which is uh, version 1.1 right now. And one benefit you could get with the TensorFlow is the, uh, the uh, cloud platform, uh, support from the cloud platform. As I mentioned, we can provide the uh, uh, cloud platform with the uh, tens of the thousands of the uh, servers with the CPU, GPU, as well as the TPU cores. TPU is a uh, stands for the Tensor Processing Unit. This is an, an ASIC or custom designed uh, LSI designed only uh, designed by Google, and that provides the 11.5 petaflops per uh, port. Port is a uh, one cluster for the the TPU. That is almost equivalent to the, uh, the largest supercomputer in the world. So you can say that Google has been building our own supercomputer from scratch, from chip level, to just for running the TensorFlow uh, training and prediction. And we are externalizing this power of the Google Cloud Platform and uh, large-scale distributed training and predictions as a commercial service called Cloud Machine Learning Engine, or ML Engine. That is a fully managed TensorFlow platform running on Google Cloud. So whereas TensorFlow is open source, if you really want to get the full benefit from the Google Cloud environment, like a network or TP or anything, you may want to choose ML Engine. That runs your TensorFlow graph running on Google uh, Cloud with the tens of CPUs or GPUs, or and maybe in near future, we will we'll be supporting TPUs as well. And also, you can get the uh, HyperTune uh, which is the hyperparameter tuning automation tool based on the Gaussian process. 
So let's take a look at how you can combine your BigQuery Detail Warehouse with machine learning engine or TensorFlow. One use case is to use the uh, BigQuery for pre-processing an ETL. But as, because if you are a data scientist, you may know that maybe the major part, right, guys, some people say that it's over 50% of the data scientists is uh, all about pre-processing and data cleansing and getting the high quality data set for training the machine learning model. And as long as they're using the, uh, the existing traditional technologies such as Apache Hadoop or uh, the Spark or those kind of the things, you have to wait for tens of minutes or a uh, few hours. It's an, you cannot get the faster iterations uh, on the ad hoc data analytics. So instead, you can use the BigQuery, uh, which can access to the hundreds of the nodes uh, in a few seconds to get things done. So for example, in this case, I'd like to um, train a very simple model, neural network model on TensorFlow by using the training data set uh, pre-processed by the BigQuery. That is called Crashifying Manhattan. So I'd be using a very simple training data which has the latitude and longitude, pairs of the latitude and longitude, and the trained neural network model, whether each geolocation is inside Manhattan or not. So let's take a look at, look at the training data set. I'm using the public data set called NYPD Collisions on BigQuery. That is a um, public data set available to anyone on BigQuery uh, where the table has the, uh, all the uh, records for the car accidents happened, happened in the New York City. And it has timestamp and borrow, latitude and longitude. And we'll be using this data as a training data set for training neural network. But if you take a look at this raw data, there are some useless data that which doesn't have any borrow data. So we, I wanted to ex exclude those useless data by adding some more uh, conditions. And also I wanted to add a flag whether uh, the location is in Manhattan or not. And I also wanted to shuffle the data and wanted to extract the first 10,000 rows. So let's define the SQL. And uh, by the way, I'm using, I have been using the tool called Cloud Data Lab which is the IPython notebook or Jupyter notebook integrated with Google Cloud. So this is a Jupyter notebook, pure Jupyter notebooks, but you can run the BigQuery SQL directly inside the web browser. And as you can see here, you can ex ex execute your BigQuery query inside Python code. And I'm executing it right, it right now. And take the result, convert it into the NumPy array. Uh, NumPy is the uh, standard uh, numerical operation library. So everybody using the NumPy and you can easily combine the result from BigQuery data warehouse, pre-processed by the BigQuery, convert it into the Python runtime, as you can see right now. So there are so many uh, 10,000 pairs of the latitude and longitude with the uh, is Manhattan flags. So this is the training data set. So let's take a look at how it looks like by using matplotlib. So this is the training data set. You can see the shape of the Manhattan. Uh, with even you can see the shape of the Central Park here. So let's split the data into the training data and test data. And this is where you are using TensorFlow. TensorFlow uh, uh, has been, uh, we have an, uh, released the first TensorFlow version 1.0 at 2015. And at that time, we launched, a new, uh, launched the first low-level API for TensorFlow. But now we have the TensorFlow 1.0 and 1.1 is the latest, which provides the higher level API. So you don't have to write the tens of random Python code anymore to define your neural networks. Uh, rather than that, you can just write a few lines of code like this. This is the lines Python code where you are defining a DNN crash fire or deep neural network crash fire uh, that is specifying the hidden units, uh, four hidden units with 20 neurons on each unit uh, in hidden layer. So it's so easy. Uh, it's just like using scikit-learns uh, on TensorFlow. So you don't have to write tens of lines of Python code anymore. So now I'm creating the DNN crash by your object here. It's taking time. So let's take a look at how the neural network works. Before training the neural networks, how let's take a look at how stupid it is uh, before training the, the network. So because I haven't trained the neural networks, it, the neural network doesn't make sense at all with the data set. So it thinks this blue part must be in Manhattan. So it doesn't make sense any, at all, any sense at all. So we have to train the neural networks. Let's, 
trained in neural networks by calling the many fit method again and again, executing it. So by calling the fit method and uh, passing the training data set uh, pre-processed by BigQuery, you will see that the neural network will be trained gradually. It's not so smart yet. So, oh, it's, it's getting much better. Still, it thinks uh, uh, some part of the Bronx is uh, Manhattan. Now it's not Bronx, uh, Brooklyn. But it's get, getting much, much better. So this is the final result. Machine learning cannot provide you 100% accuracy, but still it works. The accuracy uh, is 99.6%. Uh, so you just saw that it's so easy to do the pre-processing pre ET with BigQuery and convert all the data uh, converted to the uh, Python runtime and run the TensorFlow on the uh, data wrap uh, tool. And now let's take a look at how you can combine the TensorFlow and BigQuery in the other way, different way, uh, using the TensorFlow for extracting feature vectors that could be used on the BigQuery UDF. So, uh, let me show the demonstration. Again, the query smart demonstration has another demonstration for the image similarity search. So this is where uh, this is the demonstration where you are executing a sim image similarity search on data warehouse. So, for example, if you choose one key image, it's like this all image. Now, the BigQuery is executing a similarity search against one million images on Google Cloud Storage and Google uh, BigQuery. And this is not a um, query based on keyword or index or tags or metadata. This is actually comparing two different images for its uh, color and shape and uh, textures and patterns on in, in images. Oh, the network is so slow. So you can see the result. And this is not a keyword search based like a, this is not a result looking for the keyword all. Rather than that, it is actually comparing the, all the similarity of the, the images. So many of the images has the uh, green background, has the uh, similar uh, patterns or textures of the all. So this is the uh, similarity search you can do with the uh, data warehouse. So what I have done with this demonstration is that I have stored all the one million images on Google Cloud Storage and apply the uh, CNN or convolutional neural networks running on machine learning engines with TensorFlow so that you, are able, you can extract all the feature vectors of the each one million images and uh, co uh, copy the feature vectors on BigQuery where you are running the BigQuery UDF to compare the two different feature vectors to do the similarity search. And we have used the CNN, especially the VGG16 and the Usually, if you are using CNN, you are taking the labels out of the CNN, like the labels such as the cat or dog or human face or vehicle. But rather than that, you can use the CNN for extracting feature vectors. In this case, we have uh, extracted feature vector with 1,000 elements in it, the 1,000 uh, dimensional element. And that could be used uh, at BigQuery. You can write a test flow code to extract the feature vectors from it. So that those feature vectors, the 1,000 dimensional R, the vector, could be used for comparing the similarity between the images. And again, you can use the user-defined functions. In this case, I have defined the uh, UDF called distance to uh, the calculated distance between two vectors and run, uh, run SQL by using the uh, distance functions. So that was the, uh, the techniques I wanted to show. So BigQuery provides the fully managed petabyte scale data warehouse. And the most important feature of the BigQuery is that you can also run your procedures, programming language written in JavaScript, running on the hundreds of the uh, nodes on BigQuery in uh, tens of seconds. I think, I suppose this is the process platform where you can run any arbitrary logics against the hundreds of the, uh, the nodes in a, few, in a very short time period. And also, you can combine BigQuery with machine learning engine and TensorFlow to extract the feature vectors that can you know, capture the, all the human senses or instinct from the data set. And 
again, I want to stress that this technology could be available for, available for any employee in your enterprise. So once you have extracted feature vectors and you find user-defined functions, that is an, an task for the data scientists and engineers, then you can allow the, anybody like a salespeople or marketing people, marketing people in your enterprise to executing BigQuery UDF query uh, on any kind of the data set they want. So you can share the, the power of the, uh, this query, smart query, with the, everyone in the enterprise. And the documents and images are only a few examples that could be applied to the, uh, these techniques. So this technique could be applied to any kind of the content where you can define any feature vectors. For example, if you have many products on your e-commerce e website, or if you have any, uh, many users on your, on, your, on your website, you can define feature vectors that represents the uh, features or characteristics of each product and users, and build the recommendation systems or the uh, spam filters or anything, or so defining the, uh, any faulty IoT devices by looking at the, uh, the feature vectors. That's it. Thank you so much. <laughs>